This is a code for this is a code enforcement hearing for the city of North Miami. Today is um, June seventh, June nineteenth, two thousand nineteen. I'm Christopher Benjamin, special magistrate for the city of North Miami. The purpose of this hearing is to determine if a code violation exists at your property as observed and cited by a code enforcement officer of this city. If the city is not able to prove its case, then I'll dismiss the case and you'll be free to go. These proceedings are being recorded. Therefore, all persons who are speaking should do so one at a time to ensure that all testimony is clearly audible on the recording device. If English is not your primary language, then please inform me when your case is called and we have some interpreters that will assist you during your proceeding. When your case is called, the property owner, agent for the property owner, or any witnesses that you may have should come forward to the podium on the left side of the room. When asked, please speak directly into the microphone and say aloud your name, your business or mailing address, and your relationship to the property. If you're not the property owner or an attorney representing the property owner, then you're going to need a power of attorney in order to speak on behalf of the property owner. Uh, for new cases, you'll be asked for the record if you are aware of and understand the violation that is being heard today and whether you understand what is required to resolve that violation, so please answer accordingly. The city will present its case first, and the property owner will be given an opportunity to, to testify on their own behalf, to bring forward witnesses to testify, to present evidence uh, and photographs, and to cross-examine the city's witnesses. <coughs> Following the case presentation, I'll issue a finding of fact on the case, and if I find that a violation of the city code exists or existed at your property, then depending on the case type, I'll set an abatement date for the violation to be resolved, or for repeat violations, I will impose a daily fine amount. For new non-repeat cases, my order is going to include an abatement date by which you must resolve the violation and a daily fine amount that I may impose at a future hearing date should the violation not be resolved by the abatement date. If I find sufficient cause to postpone enforcement actions during these hearings, then I will table that case to another hearing date in the near future. If you do not agree with my findings of fact, then the property owner may appeal my administrative order on the case to the circuit court being in Dade County. This is the, Miami, this is the 11th Judicial Circuit in and for Miami-Dade County. An appeal must be filed within 30 days of the date of the execution of my administrative order that is going to be appealed. In accordance with Florida statutes, if a person decides to appeal any decision made by this special magistrate with respect to any matter considered at these proceedings, then the person will need a verbatim record of the proceedings. This record includes the testimony and evidence mm -hmm. upon which the appeal is to be based. The cost for obtaining the verbatim record shall be the sole responsibility of the appellant, and it is recommended that the persons who plan to appeal their case should provide their own court reporter at these proceedings for expedience issues. Pursuant to the city codes, if the city of North Miami prevails in prosecuting a case before this special magistrate, the city shall be entitled to recover all costs incurred in prosecuting the case. The current cost assessment amount is $100 per case. Now, once the city records an order that imposes a fine and authorizes a lien against your property, then the city will charge an additional fee to record the release of that lien. So that if you're going to be giving te testimony today, please rise and raise your right hands to be sworn and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Stay standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, if there's no uh, additions, deletions, or corrections to the agenda, uh, call your first case. <coughs> First case is Daniel Pomerantz, case number CEGMP 2018-00433 was postponed to August. Case for Daniel Pomerantz, CEGMP 2018-00432 is postponed to August. Call your Sandra next. Theok, case number CERCG 2019-00045 is complied. Case Jules Cadet, FYBRR 2018-00092 has complied. Greek Ortho Church, case number FYBRR 2018-00007 is postponed to August. 
Greek Orthodox Church, FYBRR 2018-00022, has complied. Roddy Richard, CERCB 2019-00058, ownership has changed, removed from calendar. Jesus Gaetan, CERCB 2019-00049, was postponed for 90 days. And that concludes all the amendments to the agenda. Call your first case. Civil violation ticket appeal, Matthews Real Estate, CTTRA 2019-00005. That case has been uh, postponed to a later date. The first ticket appeal case that we have is from Marie Mazepas, case number CTBPR 2019-00073. Who's here on behalf of this property? Come, come forward. <coughs> Ma'am, uh, go ahead and uh, make your appearance for the record, meaning state your name and your address and your relationship to the property. My name is Mary Mazepas. Oh, my address is 115 Northwest 121 Street, Miami, Florida, 3168. I'm the owner. Okay. Uh, you received the traffic, uh, traffic, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what you, that's what happens when you wear way too many hats. Mm -hmm. um, you received a citation for violation of uh, the city code with regards to an issue can, uh, existing on your property. Uh, this is an appeal of that citation. Are you still uh, contending that the citation was not issued properly? Uh, I got um, Are you still objecting to the ticket? Yes. All right. City? If I can get my witness to please state your name for the record. Jose Perez. Right. Officer Perez, on or about. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just, just briefly because it's hit me. Can you just give me briefly why you're, what, what your objection is? My objection for the ticket? Yes. Oh, uh, can I have somebody to say? Creo? Yes. Uh, matter of fact, uh, all the interpreters, can you please rise? You saw me square or firm that the translation which you're about to give in this proceeding will be accurate and correct to the best of your knowledge, skill, and ability. Thank you. All right. So, ma'am, ma you're objecting to the ticket, so I just want to know um, what's the basis, quickly, what's the basis of your objection? It was given to me correctly. I, I would just like for it to be dismissed because I do not have the money to pay it. Okay. See, when my spotted senses tingle, you know, uh, it's always for a reason. All right. We, I can't dismiss a ticket just because the person doesn't have the ability to pay. Because then everybody in this room will be like, I can't pay. So... That's not a basis by which I can dismiss the ticket. However, I can give you some, uh, well, actually, we can't give them any more time. No, uh, um, you do have discretion in the amount of the court costs or the, uh, the fine that how, you how, how much was the ticket that was issued? The original ticket was $500. And what's the violation? It was for enclosure of a rear porch without a building permit. And have they obtained the permit? As of my reinspection, no. Okay. All right. So, in order for me to do something for you, you got to do something for us. You got a violation because you didn't have a permit for uh, enclosing the back portion of your property. So now you got to do what's go. Now you got to get what's called an after the fact permit. So you still got to get a permit even though you've already completed the work. 
okay? So in order for me to even consider reducing the fine, I got to know that you have done what's necessary to resolve the issue. Okay, I'm happy to do so. I've already gone and gotten the application to get on the way with that. Okay, so uh, even though the city, they don't like when I do this, but I'm going to reset this so that you have the time to do that. So come back to me on um, come back to me on man, I'm not here. How long, how long do you think you need? I do not know how much time the city will give me because I've already gotten the application and Monday I'm going to submit it. Okay. So come back before me on July 17th and let's see if you have done everything that's necessary. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. We will be moving into new business. The first case is Richard Thompson, CERCV 2018-00196. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Is anyone here on behalf of this property? Yeah. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Uh, I'm Richard W. Thompson. I'm the owner of the property. Okay. I didn't have a vested interest, but I sure do have one now. <laughs> I, I remember you, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, sir. All right. So, where are we at today? Is this, is this the same violation or is this a new violation? It's the only one. All right. That's why, that's why I'm asking to make yeah. sure. Shanna Sanders, City of North Miami, Code Compliance Officer. Um, same violation as you stated. This is a case for the recreational vehicle that's parked on the side of the property. As of last Wednesday, the variance still hasn't been obtained, and the boat still remains parked on the side of the property. Has it been applied for? Uh, I have the application, sir, and uh, I was going to apply for it, but. Uh, I've got the boat up for sale and the house, and uh, uh, I have a guy in Homestead that wants to put it on his property for uh, um, a sale there. I might get more money out of the boat. I've had the boat since 1988. Um, I previously adjudicated this matter, right? Um, yeah, I did. I you didn't. Uh, there was another uh, um, uh, mag special magistrate, Your Honor, mm -hmm. that was that was here. Uh, it's just a deluge of rain. I need to pop the boat up on the driveway. I need to take the wheels off and check the race and the bearings and pack them. And then I can safely take it down the road. Uh, his lot is, is underwater, three foot underwater. We've had a deluge of rain every day. I still have to make my bills. And uh, so, so I've so been working one, to do that. So which one, which one are you going to do? You're going to get the variance or are you going to remove it from the property? I, I think because the variance is not transferable to the new owner of the property, mm -hmm. right? And uh, they said that I can have a boat of any size as long as it's 10 feet from the road and 2 feet from the property line, which is what it is. It's, it's, it meets up the, the code of that. They were kind of leery of it because it's been 12 years since they passed this variance. And they're coming to me now. Well, the statute of limitations are most things are seven years. So uh, in that respect, you know, it's kind of like an old, old thing that's been going on. It's the only violation I have right now and, and the only one I'll ever have again because I'm leaving. So, I mean, uh, I think what I should do is, uh, is get with my real estate agent, say, hey, let's, let's sell this now. And if you can't, then I'm going to go to a guy that's what we call market buyers. They buy your house for market value, which is what the county says your house is worth. 
And, um, you know, it's summer. Um, I have a home in, in Michigan. I just soon go back to. So uh, I think what I'll do is, uh, is I'll, if I'm staying, I'm going to fill out the variance. We'll get it done and, uh, and give you the $293. That's what they require over there. They did. They had to look it up. They they weren't so sure that I I really required one either that I could have been grandfathered in. So uh, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I either move the boat or uh, I'll get the variance right away. I've got the forms here and uh, the neighbors. They don't care if the boat's there or not. No problem for them at all. To answer so. your first question, um, Magistrate Benjamin, yes, you adjudicated this case at the April fifth hearing. Mm -hmm. um, you gave him until last um, Wednesday to. Um, secure the variance, apply for the variance, in order to remove the boat. Yeah. I think I think that's I think that was enough time. So well, uh, the thing is, it's the rain, sir. If it's not a deluge of rain all day and night long, uh, the boat would be moved, or the variance would be. Um, after all these years, that I need a variance for it anyhow, but uh, the variance would be obtained. Yeah, I can go over there and obtain it today or tomorrow. I mean, not not a problem. That's not a problem. I can do that. But the uh, the problem all with it all is is that it's not transferable to the new owner, and that uh, I don't want the boat uh, to use it anymore. Any, I haven't used it since uh, 2007, and uh, I don't see where it's hurting anybody anyhow. Um, I've got pictures of boats in the neighborhood. They never heard of such a variance. Uh, right today, I even took quite a few pictures. All right. But, so um, I, I heard this case in April. Well, I'd, li I'd like to I'd like to comply with you, sir, right now and just get get it over with. All right. Sure. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. So, uh, let's make that happen within the next 30 days. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. Thank if you, not, the fines will go forward. Yeah. OK. No, All I'll right. get taken care of. Thank you very much. All right. Have a nice day, sir. You too. The next case is Abid Tedla, case number RCCOR 2017-00004. Gary Beswick is the officer. Yes, my name is, <coughs> my name is Abid Tedla, <coughs> property address uh, 485 Northeast 131st Street. So you've been made aware of the violation, correct? Uh, yes, I... Are there any objections to the violation? Yes, well, I... You, you're objecting to the violation? Yes, no, I'm not objecting. Uh, the reason why we stayed this long is because the violations are very expensive. I inherited this problem from the previous sellers and... How much How much time do you need? Well, no, right now we do... We, we ha I have the fund uh, on the 12th, which is seven days ago. They released the fund. As of now, uh, we already have... I know you want to. You want to give me some. I know you want to give me some background to it, but it's yes, kind of no, it's no, kind of it's kind of uh, cut and dry. You uh, have no objection to. You have no objection to. No, sir. To uh, to the thing. You need more time. Tell yes, me how much I, time. Yes, I just so I can tell you if I can give it to you or not. Yes, sir. I just need about a month or two because we already have submitted the plan All to right. the city. All right. And we're just waiting. It's pending. Run as soon as we get the f the the permits, we're ready to go to work. Got you. So, you said about thirty days. Uh, but. 60 days to the most, 30 will do. We, we, we're starting this week. Okay, I do not know how long the inspections. <laughs> all right. I'm going to give you a little bit more, okay. all right, because um, I'm back here in September. So um, having heard the testimony, evidence presented. Uh, it's not a new case. Oh, it's not? No. Oh. All right. September 18th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gary stole my thunder. The next case is Three Horizons East, case number CENUS 2019-00187. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Good morning. Danny Weber, the attorney for the Condominium Association. Is this a new case? This is a new case. Counselor, has your client been made aware of the violation? I was just made aware of this now, yeah. Does your client have any objections to the violation? No, we're just asking for time to, uh, to achieve compliance. How much time? If I can have 60 days, that would be great. September 18th. Find the violation does exist is cited. Issue an abatement date of September 11th. If not abated by September 11th, then it's $250 per day until abated. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. The next case is Gustavo Lorenzo, CESEA 2018-00001. Shanna Sanders is the officer. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Ernesto Santisteban. I'm the contractor <laughs> on record for Gustavo Lorenzo. I guess this web page crashed. Um, is this a new case? No, no, it's an old state case. Still compliance? No, not yet. How much? Uh, how much time do you need to get the compliance? I, I, I think 15 days at least is uh, what I need because this is the last uh, plans that was submitted to them mm -hmm. and happened that the person that need to approve today is the last day of vacation is supposed to arrive today and then approve and then I came back to here with the application where it's already here, fill it up. I think next week the permit is going to be on approved. July 17th, or the fines go forward. Okay, sir. Thank right, you thank very you. much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. The next case is Ernst Felix, RCCOR 2016-00005. Gary Beswick is the officer. This is new or old? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is an on, on, ongoing situation. All we need is more time. But the contract on the job. Any objection? Oh, okay. No. How much time? How much additional time do you need? We've done a lot of work on the property. Uh, maybe three months. All right. See you back on September 18th. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. The next case is Venice Lane. There are four cases for this customer. The first case we're going to hear is MHVIO 2018-00354. I'm sorry, everyone. There, if there is a white pickup truck that parked in the city attorney's spot, it's about to be towed. Anyone driving a white pickup truck? Okay. So we'll move forward with Venice Lane's case. Okay. I'm sorry, number what on the agenda? I'm sorry? Number 18? Uh, number 67. They have four cases. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Yes, my name is Paul Shapiro, uh, USA Management. And George Mejia, manager of the union. All right. He's the, pre he's the president of the association. All right. You guys have been made aware of the violation, correct? Yes. Are there any objections to the violation? Uh, no. How much time do you need? None. Everything has been done. Vanessa Willis, City of North Miami Code Compliance Officer. Um, there are a total of um, four violations that were written on the property. Um, we'll start with three five, the one that ends in 354. They were cited to repair or replace the self-closing gates and locks on the pool. Um, also pressure clean and paint the pool deck and surface. And as of uh, June 12th, they were not in compliance. So if, if they are in compliance and they have photos, they can show me. But on June 12th, they were not in compliance. Yes, they were scheduled uh, to be done by a vendor and I had spoken to Vanessa and told her that it was done. It turned out when she called me back that they weren't but the following day they were all corrected. We have pictures of the gates, the self-closing locking gates. Most vendors don't want to come out to do a little job. I hear that. You know? Mm -hmm. Seems like there's a market for that. A small job handyman. Yeah, seems like 
and it is a growing market. Don't move. <laughs> Don't leave me. Okay, Special Magistrate, um, he's showing me photos to where the, um, the locks have been replaced, but I would like to go for myself before closing it. So if we can do 30 days on that one, or if you want right. to just continue. July 17th. Okay. Um, the next one is to paint the building. There's one. Okay. So, so the next case on record that we're going to speak about is MHBIO 2018-00355. Uh, Your Honor, yes. there were two areas. Uh, let me explain something. This is a 20-unit co-op, and it's underfunded. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Vanessa yeah. sent me pictures of two areas that had to be repainted, which yeah. were done. Okay. Yeah, but you see now it's exactly. smoothly closed. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So it looks like you need an opportunity to go and check the violations again, Vanessa. Mm. Is that correct? Okay. Say it again, Special Magistrate. Sounds like you need an opportunity to go in and check these things again for yourself. Yes, since they're stating that they are in compliance and my last inspection, they were not. Um, yes, I would ask for. So here's what happens. I'm going to reset it for July 17th, but if compliance happens within that time, then it won't come back before me. Right, it's all been done. I think one of the other violations was the parking lot that had okay. to be resealed and striped. That was the other one. Yes. Um, I wasn't aware of that, but we received um, the final proposal from Southern Asphalt Engineering, which I have here, and uh, George will be signing the contract today, and that will be done as soon as they can schedule it. All right, so we have, we, okay. we have it reset for July 17th. Okay, thank, thank you. you. We need to call each Was there case one more violation? Go ahead. Call, you can call the clerk and call each case into record for the, the magistrate's ruling on each case that will be announced is that it will be reset for July 17th. Okay. So MHVIO 2018-00357 has been reset to July 17th. Case number MHVIO 2018-00358 has been reset to July 17th. The next case is Larry Jean. Well, I thought, excuse me, I thought there was one more violation. There were four. We just called four into record. Oh, okay. Yes. The other one was for the extermination. So if you have the report, you can just send that to me or show it to me. Well, That's fine. Well, the extermination for the building was tented. Okay. I have the, the printout. I'm looking for people who can just send me the report. The building was, the building was tented by Bug Free Services, and the final payment was made on November 28th. So here. Okay. 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 Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next case is for Larry Jean, C E G M P twenty nineteen zero 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 nine. Jose Perez is the officer. Larry Jean, uh, the uh, residence is one five five Northwest Hundred Twenty Seventh Street. North Miami, Florida, 33168. I'm the owner. All right. You've been made aware of the violation? <coughs> well, the situation with the violation is um, there's a combination of a lot of things. I you think this isn't the first time. Do you understand the violation? I understand it, yes. And do you object to the violation? Uh, no. How much time do you need? Um, due to the rain, maybe a, another 30 days. All right. Um, this is new, right? Uh, this was previously adjudicated, but I'm fine with giving the 30 days. All right, July 17th. Right. Uh, I have a question. If sure. um, complied and um, fixed, uh, is there a fine for it? If it, if it's complied, you know, if I if I you know comply with um, all the repairs, I know it's right. it was That's brought up last no. time. No. Okay. All right. Thanks. 
The next customer has two cases, Terrell Matthews. The first case we're gonna hear is CESOD 2019-00016. The officer is Jose Perez. Go ahead and make your appearance. Terrell Matthews. 17120 Northwest 18th Avenue. I own the property at 12065 Northwest 2nd Avenue Investment Property. You've been made aware of the violation, correct? Uh, yes. Any objection to the violation? Only one. Uh, they want me to uh, replace the grass on the swell uh, because of parking, but no one parked on the swell, and the grass is never going to grow on the swell because it's under a tree that's provided by the city. Well, that's part of the violation. Uh, there's also part where you have to replace the grass on the lawn that was damaged due to the parking as well. The grass on the lawn was, there were some tenants there, they are, they are, they are no longer there. And um, parking on the, on the lawn came from a pre uh, previous owner that put a lot of pavers in the yard. The whole entire front yard is covered with pavers. I have to remove all the pavers before I could plant grass there. Is there any objection to doing that? No. All right. How much time do you need? Say 45 days. Uh, July 17th. That'll be fine. All right. Well, it has to be done by July 10th. Um, right. So, finding a violation does exist as cited. Issue an abatement date of July 10th, not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day until abated. Okay, one question. So now in the swell area, I don't have to put grass there, do I? The uh, code does require for there to be grass on the swell area. But it won't grow because there's an olive tree that's covering that area. It doesn't get sun. So put, put this, that's put this why there's no grass there now. Put the sod there, and if it grows, it grows. If it doesn't, so put some sod there. It may grow. It may not. But I think that's unjust because we don't park there. It's not because we're parking. It's, it's, that's not fair because listen this yes, code okay. requires the grass to be on the on the swell and makes it the owner's responsibility to do that so it's not really a matter of whether you're parking there or not the fact that there's no grass there and this by code is the property owner's responsibility to maintain that area so as you're putting some sod on the on the lawn throw some sod over there too uh, that's a cost to me and i think it's unfair but i will comply you know just to save aggravation but it, it's not a it's, it's I feel like it's unfair. It's not going to grow. It's a waste of time. But, Your Honor, I, I'll comply. Thank you. Next case for Mr. Terrell. Mr. Terrell, you have two cases. The next case for Mr. Terrell Matthews is CEWWC 2019-00039. The, the officer is Jose Perez. The, car, the carport. Okay, yes. A any objection with regards to repairing the carport? No problem at all. All right. Same time? Yes, sir. All right. July 10th. Not abated by July 10th, and it's $250 per day until abated. I understand. Thank you. All right, thank you. The next case is Grenoble, Lewis, June. The case number CEGMP 2019-00051. Edme St. Louis is the officer. Pilar, are these all on the new business? Are these all, all new? New cases on no. the new business? No. I just, I just put them there depending on which customer came in. So these are all the customers. new case mm -hmm. all right uh, go ahead and make your appearance for the record Grenoble Lujin 1545 Northeast 139th Street North Miami Florida 33161 okay. and have you been made aware of the violation uh, do you understand the violation a few days ago yes you I do you understand the violation uh, I even though I'm objective to what is going on now? Uh, <coughs> first, make the story short. The the tree from the city. Before before we tell the story. Yes. Are you objecting to the violation? Yes, sir. Okay, city. Good morning, um, city of North Miami Court Officer St. Louis. This violation is for general maintenance of the front porch. And I've made numerous contact with the property owner and as well as the son of the property owner. So the son is fully aware of the situation. Now, as far as for the property owner, I remember speaking to a group of elderly that, that stayed at the, that resigned at the property in Creole, making sure they understood 
what they needed to do. So I'm not sure why he's saying he don't understand the violation. Because this has nothing to do with no tree. It's for this the front is to porch. to obtain a permit for the maintenance of the front porch poles. Yes. Okay. Uh, firstly. Do you need, do you, let me ask this. Do you need an interpreter? No, no, I don't. Okay. I, I, I understood. I just um, want to make sure. Yes, I, I understood. Uh, firstly, you said you spoke with my son. My son is only six. Uh, that will not be relevant. Um, I'm so sorry. Le le you can just let me finish. See we, if we can comply. Well, let me let me let me try yes. to keep us on track. Yes. The front porch has some poles that need to be maintained, and you need a permit for that. Okay. Because you need to maintain those poles. All right. Have those poles been maintained? Have you done that? No. Um, do you think you shouldn't have to do that? I would assume yes. I would assume yes. Okay. I would so, assume yes. Presumably, uh, the reason I was uh, studied about the tree, the tree fell uh, onto my house, mm -hmm. f the, c the city tree. When I, when I came to the city, they told me it's happened uh, by the nature, so there's nothing they can do. Now, uh, the reason does I that does that have to do with the front porch? Yes, uh, because everything was broken down from um, from the city tree. So now, I would comp I would comply, but the thing is that because the city denied to do it, now I'm going to my insurance to adjuster. Uh, it just the process just started. It's going to take a long, you know, a little bit of time for me to come, not even to comply, because it's not only the thing that I need to fix. To fix it, I have other job to be done. If I have to do it right now, it's going to be a problem for me to do the other things. I'm, com I'm trying to see if everything can be done at the same time. But to adjust the uh, insurance, is, you know, it's taking a little bit of time back and forth. I can see what I can do. I'm truly uh, uh, responsible for, you know, uh, I live in the city for years now. I want to do it, but the thing is that um, it's kind of uh, Listen, tie on me. We'll, we'll do our best to help make it the, mo the easiest for you to comply. Yes, please. But understand that one part has nothing to do with the other part as far as the city is concerned with compliance. Okay, so we want you to comply, and we want you to we want to help make compliance as easy for you as possible. But you also have to understand that there are time situations to these things, there are time limits to these things, yes. and the city wants compliance as soon as possible. Yes, okay? I, I understood so that issues with insurance. I know people always come before me with issues with insurance and things like that. Those things, this magistrate are not allowed to consider or should not be considering with be in terms of compliance. Yes. Okay? Because it is the property owner's responsibility to comply the best that they can. Yes. Yeah. Right? M may I say something? Okay, Your Honor, if you go, it's visualized. Okay, on the, you, if you see the pole, on the top of it, it's messed up by the city. So now, to do it, I have to do the top first, then do the, the poles. It, it was... It, it's, I, yes. It's messed up. It's, it's, it's messed up by natural occurrence. Yes, yes, I understood a, that. A but natural, this is denied. A, natural, a yes. natural occurrence made the prop, made the tree fall upon your house. That's right. By by law, that's the that's the property owner's responsibility. By law. Okay. The case law has is clear on this point that if if a if a tree falls on the on someone's property, the the property owner with whom the the, the, the tree has fallen upon it's their responsibility t to handle that situation. Okay. All right? Yes. So I'm going to give you till September 11th. All right? Okay. Let's see where we're at. All right? Okay. So, uh, Your Honor, I, I would ask him, would you mind if I can have, like, within six months? Because within six months, be, because I have to go to adjust there and everything, insurance, to see if I can comply. Because I want well, to do it too. It's not like I don't want to. I want to do it by complying. But it's not sure I understood that the city will not do it. But if I have to do it, there are, things, there are other things that I have to be done. With that being said, 
I'm in complying. I will contact her. I will, you know, whatsoever. So let's do it three months. Let's do it three months at a time. Okay. So I find out a violation exists. Society issued abatement date of September 11th. It's not abated by September 11th. Then it's $250 per day until abated. So what will happen is that on September 18th, you'll come back before me and tell me what's going on. Okay. All right. right. I, I'm fine with it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. The next customer has two items on the agenda. George Dotzler. The first case we will be hearing is MHVIO 2018-01257. Gary Beswick is the officer. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. I'm George Stotzler. I'm the owner of the property. Uh, are they, you've been made aware of the violations, correct? I received a notice. Are you aware? Are you aware what's wrong? Uh, there's an uh, allegation that I built a floating dock, which I did not. So. And there's a complaint about a seawall. Okay. So you're objecting to these allegations. Uh, this the floating dock has been there as before I moved in. Right, but there's some things as it relates to property. This is a uh, that runs with the property. So it doesn't, it doesn't the matter? Of myself and my son. My son is 18 now. Right there, he's like two and a half years old. And that's on the seawall. You, you inherit, when you buy Sir, property, you inherit, thi you inherit things that, that go with the property. Sir, hand it to him. He'll bring it forward. All right. So if, if a floating dock is part of that property, and it happened to be installed without a permit, you, when you bought the property, you inherited that problem. Well, then I would ask, what is the proof that it was installed without a permit? That the city can't find a permit for it. The city can't even find plans for my house. Was my house built without a permit? You want that citation? This, <laughs> it's, it's absurd, Your Honor. I mean. The city has two records for my home. A screen enclosure and a re-roofing. Okay. The screen enclosure is long before me. It was in the early 90s. Okay. I did the roof in the late 90s. Okay. And there was nothing else in my file. Okay. I didn't empty the file. Is I there a floating dock that's connected to the property? Yes. And it's okay. been there since before I when I moved in it was old. I repaired it, but I've never So you've taken ownership so you definitely have taken ownership of it, correct? Yes, it's my floating dock. All right. And it was done without a permit. So that's where I, we're at now. I've, I've had the city tell me to repair it okay. years ago. And I repaired it. Okay. And they were fine with that abatement. Okay. And now he's telling me that it was done without a permit. I don't understand. You guys don't even remember the things you've done in the past. That's right. Gary, you guys <laughs> don't remember <laughs> things that was done in the past. I'm an objective third party. <laughs> He's saying that you don't have a record of a permit and it was there when he bought the property. No, I pulled some planks and I replaced some planks. I mean, it's not a major repair. You know, the, a rotten plank, you pull it out and you put a new plank. Was he previously, was he previously cited and made to repair the floating dock? Yeah, yes, he, uh, a couple of years back he did. So why wasn't the permit required at that time? I don't know, I wasn't the officer that cited him back then. So I have no idea. But I've been here for many things, many times. About four years ago, I came here and I objected to the red light. Um, I was testifying against red light cameras. The very next day, a code enforcement officer came to my house and found half a dozen things. Dumb little things. But I complied. And it's been ever since then, an ongoing hostility from the previous code enforcement officer. All started the day after I objected to the red light cameras. I'm a civil engineer. I studied traffic engineering. I spoke about the red light cameras that you're supposed to have a two second reaction time and one mile per, uh, 
one second per 10 miles per hour. The red light cameras here only had one second per 10 miles an hour. So if it was 30 miles an hour, it had three seconds. It should have had five seconds. And that's from the national standards. You know, standards are policy, not law, right? There's standards for stop signs. Everybody complies with them. And the law says that- It's the, actually laws. The law the says that a stop sign has to conform to the standards. Okay. So anyway, I came and I testified. Got you. And the next day, I was accosted by the city. And it's been ever since. One thing after another. Now, with respect to the floating dock, it's been there, I don't know how long. I, I could not tell you how long. <coughs> I can only say that it was old when I got there. And when the city asked me to repair it, I did. They looked at it and said, oh great, and we went on. Uh, they never accused me of building the floating dock before. And, and, it, and I can tell you with absolute certainty, there is nothing in my file except for the two things I stated. A screen enclosure done with a permit and a roof done with a permit by myself in like 98. And, and that photo is, is my son when he's like two and a half years old. Actually, he brings up a curious objection. What if previous owners actually did obtain a permit for that floating dock, and somewhere along the line, the city, who has the obligation to keep the records for a period of time, has misplaced that those rec the records of that. Whose burden is it to show that a permit was obtained? The property owner. And, and basically, um, unless, let me, this is, I'm Gary Bezik for the city of North Miami Building Department. This, this came from a complaint, basically, started by Amanda Nelly from, the, from North Miami Police Department, which was sent over to the building department to Vicky Santos, and basically, which was sent with some photograph. And the poor photograph that I have, actually, he picked the dock was recently redone. So I'm not sure what happened to the original dock, but the photograph that I have, surely, um, newly, and I'm gonna show it to him, then I'm um, forward to you. So, so just, so Mr. Bezbo, just so I, I get your point. Your point is that He's, he's done enough work on this that this, this dock is basically redone, has been redone. Yes, it's, it, it, once he touched it and do some work on it, he need permit. I don't know if permit was pulled for the original dock, mm -hmm. but the current dock that's, that's, the dock that's there was, was, was redone, and once he touched it, he have to pull the permit so he can get the inspection. Okay, you understand? I, I object, because the city has no idea what was there, and the picture I'm showing is one little piece of the dock. Now, I'll admit that the dock was at one time uh, 68 feet long and is now considerably smaller. I, I, cut, I cut off a bit from each end and discarded it. And I repaired the, the loose planking from the remainder and I put, I did paint that surface. Sounds hopefully like so it would last longer. Sounds like you did some work on the dock that changed it from its original structure as well, thus needing a permit. I guess you work for the city. Yes. Yes, I have a floating dock. I I can't see what that is, but I have a floating dock, yes. And I, I'm not objecting to the fact that I have a floating dock. I'm telling you, it's been there a very long time and I, I don't see that repairing some planks and painting them requires a permit. I mean, am I, do I have to pull a permit to caulk a crack in my driveway? Depends on how long the crack is and how significant I mean, the crack it, is. It, again, I object the absurdity of this. The city needs to be able to prove that I did the job without a permit. And it needs to prove that it was not there when I moved in. Actually, it doesn't. As, as, as you've heard, the burden to prove that you had the proper permit. So now I have to prove owner. that my house was done legally because the city has no records. 
Do you, again, do you want that? Is that a citation no, that you're they're asking absurd. for? No, because it's absurd. Don't you see the absurdity of it that the city has failed its responsibility and now you burden me with it? No. What I see is that you, you inherited a dock. You made significant changes to the dock that would have required you to get a permit. You didn't get that permit. So, yes, go get a permit. All right? I haven't heard the testimony evidence presented, finding that a citation was properly issued. How much time do you do you need for that? I I would rather deal with the whole issue of the seawall and the floating dock together because okay. you can't okay. get a floating dock now, okay. not without doing it as part of Durham and the, the um, seawall and everything compounded together. <coughs> All right, so let's talk about the seawall. So my new seawall will be. Um, um, you need to call that as your new case. Oh. You call it. Um, Hold on, we, we need to call the actual case. First. Okay. Go ahead. Madam Clerk? That case is MHVIO 2018-01258 for George Doffler in reference to the seawall. All right. Go ahead. Tell me about the seawall. Okay, so I've been working on the seawall. I've, I've done survey. I've uh, been to Durham. I have plans. And I, I haven't been able to find a contractor that wants to build the seawall I want. Uh, to to explain that, imagine that, that this little bastion here is uh, my pool uh, foundation. And this little space on each end is the seven and a half feet up to my property line. The center there is 60 feet. My property line is 10 feet beyond that. Functionally right now, the, the pool this foundation is acting as a seawall. And um, the, the existing uh, high water mark uh, is like a curve in and then along the base of that wall and then a curve out again to the other seawall. So it's sloping down. And um, I would like to plant mangroves along that wall with the exception of a ramp down to the floating dock. And you can't get anybody to build no, that No, no, no. The thing I wanted would be to build like a, like you know how the castle has a, a bastion on the corners? I wanted to build like a bastion in each corner coming out to the, to the property line. And then in the middle, I wanted to have the seawall lower. So the seawall would go across, down, across, up, and then across. And in that way, these areas could stay high and the area in the center would be as low as legally possible. I'm willing to give that up. I'll make just one seawall mm -hmm. across the outside as low as it can go and I'll deal with the crenellated portions as retaining walls directly with the city and not try to involve Durham or a, a uh, seawall contractor. I initially wanted to put pilings up against the sea, against the pool wall thinking that it might be a problem but I see it's not moving and it, it, it's unnecessary expense so I, I do have plans and how much and how long will it take you for the <coughs> those plans to you know, come to fruition I, I have no idea it, it's been a terribly long time but um, so so I have general notes, I have my survey, I have uh, something, a page that shows the existing conditions. So let's start out Here's with Here's my soils report. I did a soils report, I, I forgot about that. Let's, let's start out with three more. Here's my, my section, and, and the thing that I wanna change, so this all, this existing stuff is all fine, but what I wanna change is the plans for the seawall, which start on the sixth page and I'll just make a simple seawall and hopefully I can find somebody that will build it. All right, so let's start out with three months, all right? I'm so sorry. it'll be September 11th. Okay. Find that violations do exist as cited. Issue an abatement date for September 11th. Not abated by September 11th. Then it's $250 per day it, until abated. Look, it cannot be abated in, in that what time. What will happen, what will happen is that you'll come back before me on September 18th and you'll tell me about the progress you've made thus far. Okay, what I will promise is that the new drawings are done and sealed by an engineer. I will promise that I will get a, a uh, drywall, uh, excuse me, a seawall contractor's 
contract by that date. And then I don't and know apply when the, the job will be done. And apply for the, the permits for the floating dock. I, well, that will be part of the, the whole thing. All right. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Case 01257 was found guilty with an abatement date of September 11th, fine set at 250. The next case is DRJ Holding, case number MHVIO 2018-00923. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Jerry Mann. I'm manager member of DRJ Holdings. And we saw you a couple months ago. Yeah. For a building permit. Did we take care of it? Took care of it. Oh. Right. Mr. Didn't think I was going to survive it, but I did. Nah. <laughs> Mr. Beswick, is this, is this? It's comply. Thank you. Case dismissed. Thank you. The next case is San Susi Condos. The case number is MHVIO 2019-00039. Gary Beswick is the officer. Good morning. Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Uh, good morning. My name is Osvaldo uh, Calzada. I'm the secretary for the association. Right. And you guys have been made aware of the violation, correct? Yes. It's not a new case. Uh, so do we? this is for permitting for uh, floor rafters inside unit number three. Yes. Were we able to get that done? Uh, we, uh, after uh, last time we came, uh, we applied for a permit uh, within a week. Uh, we submitted the paperwork to the city. Um, it took uh, some time for us to hear from the city on it was approved or denied. Finally, the president came back to the city, find out there was a hole on the process because uh, they want us to submit uh, architectural drawings. So we, uh, we went back and hired uh, an architect uh, and signed a contract um, the 11th. Uh, so he's working on the, on the drawings right now so, okay, so we can bring it to back to the city. I don't, we don't have a record of that, what are you talking about? I don't have any record of what he's talking about. I have uh, the documents here. Why was it up, why was it um, applied under the 1960? We submitted it um, within a week from last month that we came, and, and then uh, yeah, speaking to the mic, sir. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't have the sad day where we apply, but um, it was within a week. No, um, my question is why. Why was it applied under a different address, under 11960 Northeast 19 Drive versus 11930? That's my question. Because the address, um, the instruction payment is for the condo. The condo is the uh, responsible for fixing it. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, that's the address for the association uh, was applied under the uh, association's um, address, but it's related to uh, Master permit uh, one nineteen thirty unit third uh, on the on this document. I don't know if that's the same one. Okay, yeah. Um, I do see um what he's referring to, just on the different address. That's why I didn't see. So you basically, can ask him how much time he need. And this is the contract for with the architect. How much time do you need? Uh, the architect promised uh, by says that we should have the drawings so we can bring it to, to the city. Not tomorrow, but next week, the city will be, uh, the, the city should have the drawings uh, to continue the process. From that point, I don't know how long. 
uh, maybe if you can give us another month uh, to get the permits uh, from the city. All right. We're ready to start work. We're July just waiting for the for the permit. July 17th. Okay. Thank you, sir. The next case is 13033 Holdings Group, LLC. The case number is MHVIO 2018-01277. Gary Beswick is the officer. <coughs> Anyone here for this property? <laughs> Go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Uh, my name is Ramiro. Uh, the address is 13033 Holdings Group. Um, the owner. Um, I just got this posted on one of my tenants' uh, door um, yesterday. Uh, we're working on the permits. Uh, the permit that we, we started on uh, the first one was the helping one of the tenants that needs some plumbing work and it's been applied for and we're waiting for the, uh, the uh, plumber to, to do his, uh, to pull his permit on his side. The sec th these, two, these two cases involve uh, sealing and restriping of the parking lot. Yes. Uh, uh, well, then we're talking a different, a different. And thing. just for clarification, he's fully aware of the violation because his permit runner came into our office and we discussed it. So he's fully aware of the violation. Okay. Um, so there's no objection to these violations. No, 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 no. We're working on the permits right now. How much time do you need? Um, there's several going at the same time. We also have a window one that is it's in process, but they came back with. They needed um, structural um, uh, plans. Just, just tell me how much time you need. It have nothing to do with the, with the seal and uh, striping. Just tell me how much time you need. Uh, 30 days. All right. Find that the violation does exist as cited. Issued an abatement date of July 10th. Uh, if not abated by July 10th, then it's $250 per day until abated. Same shall apply to the next case as announced by the clerk. Case number MHVI 0218-01278, found guilty by the magistrate, must abate by July 10th, fine set 250. The next case is 770 Condominium Associates, case number FYBRR 2018-00076, Gary Beswick is the officer. Is the whole board? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just a bunch of owners. Just a bunch of owners. All right. Actually, I, I, I did notify all of them per our assistant attorney. <laughs> she says notice, notify everybody, so I did. Oh, okay. All right. Gentlemen, go ahead and make your appearance for the record. Marshall Weinberg, owner of four units at 770 Northeast 178th Street. 28th Street, I'm sorry. Is there an association? There, that's the whole problem, sir. There is no association. When we all got these units, there was an association. The attorney absconded with all the funds, and they left us with zero. Now we have tried to collect as a group from the 15 owners, of which one-third of them owe us more than $50,000. They pay zero. We try, but there is no association, and they keep sending it to us as if we're the association. Because by law, the association has not yet been dissolved, so they have to. Once the association exists, it exists. And so the association not according to the state. State of Florida, because they never paid their fees or whatever. Uh, there is no association. They let, they let their registration uh, go. God knows what they did. They left with all the funds. <laughs> And, and left the state. So there is no, and we're trying our best. We owe, we owe the city of North Miami $14,000 in water bills, which I personally have guaranteed will get paid after I can sell my units. But I can't sell my units because of these, because of the liens on the property, which I have personally guaranteed the liens on the property. And now we're coming up with this and we don't even know what it's about. Your, your building is over 40 years old and therefore it has to be recertified. Okay, how do you do that? 
Mr. Bez, Mr. Beswick will 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 go through that with you guys, um, and I'll see you guys back on July seventeenth. Okay. Okay. Yes, come oh, come on. Wait come a minute. Hold on one second. Come on. Um, hello, can I extend it a little longer? Can get two months, please. Already we talked to a uh, couple of uh, engineers, structure engineers. Sorry, you know what to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sounds like yeah. But I say it sounds like he knows what to do. All right. Uh, right. Uh, September 18th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank very you very much. Sir. Thank All you. Right.